Um, I, uh, t tonight is a, kind of a special thing. And I, I didn't want to come back with this emerald tablet business. And I told you I was afraid, you know, it could be very boring and so forth. So I did a little bit of time. And it's just like, you know, when it happens to me, that things come in my head. And it was just like telling me, uh, yelling almost, like that, no, 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 this is important. This is extremely important that it has to be done. And, and, I, and I began to see why it is so important. And, and what I'm going to propose to you that, indeed, that these words from the Emerald Tablet could possibly, and I'm going to give you very strong evidence, have been written by an alien race, some, you know, people who came to this planet Earth from maybe another planet, another galaxy. Um, and it, it, it certainly appears to me that the person writing this, Toth, who never really lived anyhow, is the same as the person, Jesus, that we are um, following here. Um, and, I, and I'll show you why, but before I got into that, I had to say to myself, now wait a minute, if you're going to get up here and say that maybe Toth and Jesus are the same voice and uh, that this stuff was written by aliens from another planet, I said, you know, all you've done is look at this one thing about the Emerald Tablet and and how do you know that this is the way it is? So I spent time making sure about the history of the Emerald Tablet. And, and, and I found that um, it, it's a text that re reveals the primordial substance of, of life. And it's a, of a legendary uh, Hermes, Greek, and, and the Egyptian god Toth. And, um, a new translation uh, in Latin has just been published from the original Arabic, uh, from called the Book of Causes, and that also uh, I found that uh, Sir Isaac Newton did a translation of the Emerald Tablets. Uh, the original edition in Germany was in Nuremberg in 1541. And uh, then there was a version, uh, a version by uh, Philip of Tripoli in 1240. And there was also manuscripts called the Book of the Secret of Creation and the Art of Nature in 650 and 683 AD. So I was finding a lot. I found a Roger Bacon, a famous writer, had translated, as well as Michael Mayer and Alastair Crowley. So, uh, and, and then Carl Jung, Carl Jung uh, had a dream about the Emerald Tablets, which led to him writing based on the Emerald Tablets, his book called The Seven Sermons to the Dead. And, and then it, it, it winds up saying, because of its long-standing popularity, the Emerald Tablet is the only piece of non-Greek hermetica to attract widespread attention in the... West and it sets a goal as to how to set one's level of consciousness to a new degree. So I came away um, very uh, sure of, of, of this. There, you know, there is no doubt that the initial translation of this out of the hier hieroglyphs, and it, and it dates back probably over 30,000 years. And what I'm proposing to you is that it is the basis of the New Testament. It is the basis of the existence of Jesus. And it is uh, the words of people who came here from another dimension, another planet, another galaxy. You see, I, and let me explain it this way. If, if two, three thousand years ago, they called them angels. Today, they called them aliens. Basically, that's what what it is. Um, you know, it, we 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 have no problem with reading a book. In fact, we go to church and everybody bows their head about you know people talking to angels and so forth. But if you uh, bring them a book about people talking to aliens, uh, you know, well, you're considering. But it's the same thing. So. so is the Emerald Tablet the only writing ever found 
from an alien race, from people from another planet, another galaxy. And nobody, you know, we're starting it here, this, this thing. No, nobody said this except me. Um, so it's difficult uh, to think this way, but just think, could this be the document written from people who came from another place and settled here? Um, and, 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 and as hard as that is, let me show you what it, uh, how it's described. It says here, the history of the tablets is strange and beyond the belief of modern scientists. Because yeah, that's, that's the funny part of this. This thing's 30,000 years old, plus, and yet it's very scientific. It says their antiquity is stupendous, dating back some 36,000 years B.C. The writer is Toth, an Atlantean priest king who founded a colony in ancient Egypt after the sinking of the mother country. Well, I'm going to show you some things that lead me to question that. Toth was an immortal. That is, he had conquered death, passing only when he willed, and, and even then, not through death. So you see, you, you've got, you, you got to understand something. Way, way back in, in those prehistoric times, the, the people that, you know, may have come from another place were looked on as gods, you know, because they, they flew in ships and, and, they, and, they, and they had things that were very extremely modern, technically even more modern than we have. His vast wisdom made him rule over the various Atlantean colonies, including the ones in South and Central America. That in South and Central America is very interesting because that's how the Emerald Tablet winds up getting connected to the Mayans and Paco Votan and all this stuff. So, so the consensus of this particular site that what I'm, I'm taking this translation from. And I, and I guess everybody else is that this is the work of a very ancient race of people. But after reading as much as I have so far and finding this translated from hieroglyphics, I feel strongly that it is the writing of an alien race who came to this planet from another planet or galaxy or universe. See, the text covers this individual named Toth. He didn't exist any more than Jesus. I mean, it, the, what exists is, is the word. What exists is the direction. What exists is, is, is the, is the uh, understanding that is given to uh, help those of this planet raise themselves in a degree of civilization to a higher conscious state. Say. But this is the interesting part about this. 36,000 years ago, Toth, according to the Emerald Tablet, is sent to the strange land of the hairy barbarians. And when he's met by these uh, prehistoric humans, he has to use a weapon to subdue their anger because they came at him with, with spears and clubs. Now keep in mind, this is 30,000 years ago. See? So, so think of this taking place wherever you wish it, and consider it again as 30,000 years. So the instructions to this person, think, 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 think of it not a, try not to think of it as some God thing. Just let's go fantasy for a while and think of it as, as, a, as somebody from another planet, you know, or a UFO and all that stuff. So the instructions from his superior is to colonize another location. That's what this whole thing is about. I want you to go to the place of the hairy barbarians that live in the caves. So, now... Would this mean that these were instructions given to a Captain Kirk Tyke from Star Trek to come to this place and colonize it and bring some kind of civilization? Look what he says. He says, called, called to me then the master. So this would be you know, the big guy. Gather together my people. Now look at this. Take them by the arts you have learned 
far across the waters. Take them by the arts you have learned. Think of that for a minute. You know, what are you going to do? Teleport? A uh, spaceship? Until you reach the land of the hairy barbarians dwelling in the caves of the desert and then follow the plan that you know of. So this is all set, right? I mean, I want you to take a crew, go to the place where these hairy barbarians live in the caves, and then follow the plan. See, that's the interesting words to me. Take them by the art you have learned, which means there is some type of either space travel or teleportation. Until you reach the land of the hairy barbarians and follow the plan. See, in other words, there was something set in motion here that was chartered by some type of alien to civilize Earth. And think for a minute as you look at this. To the land of the hairy barbarians dwelling in the caves of the desert. Now just think of it. Think of these guys landing in a spaceship. And they get out, you know. And they're met by this, these, whatever you want to call them, prehistoric people. This guy's coming at you with, see? So the ensuing confrontation is really interesting. But before the confrontation, look at what is said. And, and I'm taking a little license here. I'm making this a little dramatic because I'm, I'm uh, uh, you know, I'm putting a little... Uh, Schmaltz into it to make it a little... But, but look, look here. Ooh, look at that picture. I gathered my people and entered the great ship of the Master. Now this is what's interesting about it. Upward we rose. Into the morning, dark beneath us lay the temple. So they're up in the sky. Suddenly over it rose the waters, vanished from earth until the time appointed was the great temple. So this to me was interesting. They entered the great ship and upward we rose. See? I mean, you, you could see it down like a Kate Kennedy or whatever. Yeah. We entered the ship and upward we rose. So I, I know, I, you know, putting that picture of the spaceship, I know may be a bit theatrical and dramatic as portraying the way the light beings came to the land of the barbarians. But let me show you in the next slide why I decided to go that way. Look at what it says. Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning until beneath us lay the children of Kem. In other words, they, they saw something below. Hey, Captain Kirk, this is Spock. Do you see them down there? Yeah, there they are. Right there. What the hell are they? That's the hairy barbarians, all right. Look at them. You see? But that's, that, look at what it says. Until beneath us lay the land. It wasn't, we were on a ship and we spotted the land. No, it was beneath us. And now look what it says. Raging, they came with clubs and spears lifted in anger, seeking to slay and utterly destroy us, the sons of Atlantis. Here they come. Look at them. What the heck are you? You know, they're coming out. A whole bunch of them. Well, what are they going to do? Here are these guys getting out of their spaceship. See? Now, what's really intriguing here and worthy is deep thought is how after landing the ship they subdue the barbarians who are coming towards them with clubs and spears. And what does Toth say in the very next paragraph? Then raised I my staff and directed a ray of vibration, striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone. A little dramatic, I, I know, but that's what it said. 
He didn't throw rocks at them. He directed a ray at them. Folks, what I'm telling you is this is 36,000 years old, and this guy, in order to subdue these people coming with rocks and clubs, directed a ray gun of some sort at them. It was like they got tasered. Did you ever see people on TV getting tasered? Well, so it's like this is, isn't it? But this is 36,000 years ago. We just started tasering people a couple of years ago. So what could this be? We rose up in the ship. I saw the land below us. The barbarians came, and I zapped them with my ray gun. Come on. It would appear that the point here is the work of civilization beginning. Is this the way the planet Earth began to become civilized? I'll tell you something. I don't know if you've ever read his work, and I haven't read all of it, but there's an author by the name of Zachariah Sitchin who wrote a book called The Twelfth Planet who says, yes, that's exactly how Earth was civilized. But then Toth says something different. He's got them to do. He just, he just tasered the whole bunch of them. And they're sitting there with their clubs and spears trying to figure out what the heck hit them. And then what does he say? Then I spoke to them in words calm and peaceful, telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying, and get this, we were children of the sun and its messengers. I humbled them by my display of magic science until at my feet they groveled when I released them. In other words, oh, he's God, he's God. Oh, I saw God. These are angels. You see, it's where it came from. That, well, what, is, what is being said here? Magic science. I showed them stuff. Hey, you barbarians want to see something? <laughs> Guess what? I can talk to California with this. <laughs> Look at that. Put it right in there. Whoa, it must be God. You see? I mean, it, it just all starts to make sense. It really does. We were children of the sun. That reference to magic science really intrigues me of someone who displayed to you know, savages almost advanced technological equipment. And you've seen them going, like when they go into the jungle somewhere or something, and these people would show the things, how their guns work, and they oh, you know, it's magic fire come out here. You know, they're crazy. <sighs> but doesn't it sound to you that this was an advanced race from somewhere who came in a ship and landed and then magic science meant they used this kind of advanced technological for the purposes of trying to civilize barbarians. One of the interesting points to me about this is that the emerald tablet was originally translated from hieroglyphics. Now, there are various forms of hieroglyphics uh, depending on the culture. Here, I'll give you an a, example of what with some, you know, those are hieroglyphics. Um, and, uh, but here's, a, here's another version of hieroglyphics that you, you might find interesting. That's hieroglyphics. But you know what's curious to me? Well, it's that when you find symbols like this, you know we're also now in 2000, 2009, whatever, you find symbols like this in many of the crop formations. And one has to consider the possibility of any connection to the same alien force that may have written the emerald tablet still now writing for a more advanced civilization in crop symbols. So 
where I'm going with this is to suggest that Toth and the Emerald Tablet is the work of alien beings from another dimension or universe or planet, whatever you wish. And when you think of the hieroglyphics and then place this next to it, as you'll see in the next slide, you have to think, gee, it could be. Because on the left, you see the symbols of thousands of years ago, and on the right, the symbols of today. You know? And who makes the ones on the right? You know, who made the ones on the left? And who placed all of these words into the hieroglyphic symbols 30,000 years ago? See? So, so what, I, what I'm saying is, did the alien force who brought the symbols to the prehistoric race then, uh, is it the same force that is bringing the symbols to the advanced race now? I realize that nowadays there is a more sophisticated design system to the crop formations, but if you think about this, Think about this. The one on the left is written on the wall of a cave, and the one on the right is written on the ground of a field. But both are symbols. And since the emerald tablet was originally discovered from hieroglyphs, I'm proposing the possibility of both being from the same force. So we have hieroglyphs for the primitive mind and crop formations for the more advanced mind. But, you know, when we take our time and study the words, and, and as I said, I, I, I didn't want to bore you in these situations, but in my head the instructions were uh, they shouldn't be bored because this is something special. But when you study the words, you have to to immediately think that possibly we have say, seen the same words that were given to the Emerald Tablet, we have seen the same words elsewhere. The strangeness of the words is compounded by the biblical words of Jesus, which suggests to me that this strange Toth is the original Jesus, as Toth identifies his mission on earth. And that's what I have to share with you as we move closer in identifying the otherworldly source of the directions for life. And I'll tell you why it's so important. If I'm right, and, and I'm not, you know, patting myself, but I, I usually am. But if I'm right, then what you are going to receive will be the words and the instruction for yourself in this room. Not saying tonight. Is it hot in here? Or? Oh, uh, go up and flip the cool. No, it's just the just the uh, thing. Just flip it on cool. That's it. Okay, let's. Uh, Let's go, Joan, and I want you to go to the next one. And here's a statement. I taught the Atlantean. Now, remember, this is the alien, the Captain Kirk, the, the, the prehistoric Jesus, being about to pass into the halls of Amenti. What I did there is I highlighted those letters A-M-E-N. Very, very, yeah, isn't it? Can you imagine what I'm saying is true, that this word came from an alien race and uh, from thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, and this very day people go into church and say amen all over the place. Set down for the guidance of those that are to come after these records of the mighty wisdom of great Atlantis. I began this incarnation not as the little men of the present age, but rather from eon to eon, renewing life in the halls of a menti where the river of life flows eternally. So here we're witnessing the beginning of amen. 
from 30,000 years ago, first passed in hieroglyphs, the word of the supreme light, amen, which is uttered from the lips of millions. You know, remember when Toph before told the barbarians, we are the messengers from the sun. Well, amen is the sun god. The Egyptian sun god. See? And note, 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 note. See, see where it says the, the halls of Amenti, where the river of life flows eternally onward. See? Let's, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to the book of Revelation. And unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans, these things say, the Amen. Ooh! The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. This is supposed to be Jesus talking. The Amen. And then look what we just saw. I taught the Atlantean being about to pass into the halls of Amenti. Right from the very beginning, isn't it something? It's the same thing. And then it says in John 7, 38, He that believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his being shall flow rivers of living water. And Toth said, I began this incarnation from eon to eon where the river of life flows eternally onward. The living water of Jesus, the, the river of life of Toth, is the same thing, isn't it? Why is it the same? And it was 30,000 years before. And you know what I'm going to do for you? When it talks about Top saying the river of life or, or the river of flowing water and, and, and Jesus talking about the river of life, I'm going to show you something in the Bible. Very interesting. Okay. Genesis, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from there it was parted and came into four heads. You see that? We're talking about the river of life now, where the river flows eternally. That's what Toth called it. And Jesus called it the river of life. The first is Pison, the second is Gihon, the third is Hedekel, and the fourth is Euphrates. Now you got the, you got the river of life flowing into four heads. You see that? Now, what I want to do, uh, we'll look at Stedman's Medical Dictionary because we're going to look in your head and my head. So rather than transcribing this, I thought it would be more uh, helpful to you to see it directly from the pages of Stedman's. So let us, let us look what it says here. There it is. Okay, now this is about your brain. And I want you to go down after it says spider's web in the third line down. Between this arachnoid and the pia mater flows a river of cerebral spinal fluid. You see that? Now go down to the last sentence. The chambers of this cave, the ventricles, are four in number. Ooh, the river of life flowing of cerebral spinal fluid in four chambers and the river flows out of the Garden of Eden and splits into four. That's where it is. The river of life is inside of your head as is everything else that is contained in the words of Toth and the words of Jesus. Go to the next where Toth talks. Toth says, Now for a time I descend. In other words, he's come to the earth. But in a time yet unborn will I rise again. Mighty and potent. And I'll require an accounting of those left behind me. Remember and heed my words, for I will return again. This is Toth talking. And require of you that which you guard. In other words, I want to know what you're doing. Wise were we with the wisdom of the children of light who dwelt amongst us. Strong were we with the power drawn from the eternal fire. Three points we want to look at. The resurrection, the return, and the eternal fire. Okay, look what Jesus says. You have heard how I said, I go away and come again to you. Jesus charged him, tell the vision to no man 
until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Now for a time I descend, but in a time yet am born will I rise again. Remember and heed my words, for surely will I return again. It's the same, isn't it? Variations, yes, but it's the same person. And what this could mean is that the very personage of Jesus is an alien from another dimension, an alien from another planet, an alien from space, an alien who came to this earth in a spaceship, who rose up in his ship and saw the land of earth below him. So there you have the resurrection and the return. Now let's look at the statement concerning fire because Toth talked about power drawn from the eternal fire. And the next one, Jesus says, I, uh, John says, I baptize you with water, but he that comes after me is mightier and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And Toth said, strong were we with the power drawn from the eternal fire. So there we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, as stated by John, and a statement of Tot concerning the eternal fire. And again, we can locate that fire. And again, it's inside of your head. And again, it's given to us by the Greek writers of the Bible. See, to the Greek writers of the Bible, Tot of the Emerald Tablet was Hermes. And to the Greek writers of the Bible, Hermes and Toth were Jesus. And it's all passed down to you, depending on what particular culture you have, how, what you can receive. You see, in Greek, the fire is the fourth stage of the mind, as you raise this within yourself, you, you advance, uh, you evolve to a higher uh, realm of your mind, that you think higher, you think differently, you start to regroup with nature, you start to connect back to our home source, which is alien to this planet. You start to, to move in a higher realm, away from the obsession with the material and the physical things. These are the, the, the four states, and, and, and you'll see here the reference to fire. You can see it starts with the earth, which is your head. And as you start to raise your meditative mind, you go into water. That's, that's, that's just a symbol of that higher stage. And then you raise it even higher, and you go into air. And then you raise it to that fourth level, which is fire. And when you have raised your meditative mind to that level, uh, that is what's called the baptism of fire. Or, as Toth said, that is where you draw the source of power from the eternal fire. You see? You're thinking completely different now. You're not the same person. You, you don't think in, in this material realm of, of, of competition and fighting and, and, and total disregard of, of nature and others. It, you know, that, that's not your source. That's not your life anymore. You, you're now not thinking with that earth mind. You're thinking with the fire mind. That's the eternal fire that Toth was talking about where you draw your source from now, see? And that's what Jesus was, or John was saying, he says, he'll baptize you with fire, meaning he'll raise your mind to that higher level, to, to where you, you don't, you know, you think totally differently. You know, when I was watching today uh, the memorials uh, for 9-11, and I saw one of the uh, clerics out of the, the cathedral in New York, and, and he said his thing there at the church, and then he was going on down to 9-11. And I wondered in my heart, I said, gee, I wonder, as he does a memorial for these uh, people that we lost in the building, I wonder if he's going to memorialize in prayer the people that were killed in Iraq and Afghanistan, the innocent people. And I, and I thought to myself, I don't think he will. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. And that, to me, is sad. So once again, we bring the power and the fire to that which we understand now as the subatomic or quantum power of consciousness. 
And, and then uh, Toth says, he talks about what we would call God, you know, the, the Father. He says, all, and of all these greatest among the children of men was my father, Toth, me, keeper of the great temple, the link between the children of light who dwelt within the temple and the races of men who inhabited the ten islands. Isn't that neat? Free was I of the halls of Mometi, bound not by death to the circle of life. And I love this last line, far to the stars I journeyed until space and time became as nothing. The two points we focus on here are the children of light and the ten islands. Okay? See, what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to show you is that these words written 30,000 years ago are the same words, the same ideas, the same directions that were given in the, the Bible of the Judeo-Christian Bible. Same thing. And, and the only difference is now we know where it came from. And what we're going to see, too, is that the, even the words of Pachel Votan and the Mayan calendar came from here, came from the Emerald Tablet. And then the words that will be given to you that will take you to a whole a different realm will not come from a priest or a pastor or a teacher or something, but will come from that which was written 30,000 years ago. If it's getting cold or something, you could... All right, all right let's go to the next... And here now, we're children of light, and we're going to focus that. While you have light, this is Jesus talking, okay? Here, here, look in the yellow. That's where Toth said the link between the children of light who dwelt within the temple in the Ten Islands. And look what Jesus said. While you have light, believe in the light that you may be what? The children of light. My goodness, it's, it's exactly the same. The link between the children of light and the races of men. And Jesus is saying, you may be the children of light. These things spoke Jesus. See? Everything is the same. And then, what about the races of men who inhabited the ten islands? Well, this may, may not, but this may have found its way into the book of Revelation. The ten horns are the ten kings. Are the ten kingdoms and the ten islands, and the races of men. You see? I, I, I don't, you know, I, I know things can be coincidences, but coincidences only can go so far. When there's too many coincidences, then it's not a coincidence anymore. You see? And I hope that what you don't make the mistake of doing is connect this in any way to religion. It's not that quite possibly, and I feel more and stronger and stronger every moment when I read the history of this, quite possibly we are reading the instructions of those who came from another place to touch down on planet Earth and civilize those who live upon this planet. Let's go to the next. Look what he says. Down through the ages I lived. And look what he says. Seeing those around me taste of the cup of death and return again in the light of life. 30,000 years ago, he's talking about reincarnation. Over the world then broke the great waters, drowning and sinking, changing Earth's balance. As we get near 2012, this seems extremely appropriate. Until only the temple of light was left, and left standing on the great mountain, still rising out of the water, were some who were living, saved from the rush of the fountains. This is a clear statement concerning reincarnation 30,000 years ago, tasting death and returning to life. And it seems... As you look at that mountain and the rush of the fountains that the biblical story of Noah may have indeed had its beginning in the Emerald Tablet. Let's look at both for just a minute. 
And the disciples asked him, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And Jesus said, Elijah has already come. But they didn't know him, and they did whatever they wanted. And the di disciples understood that he spoke of John the Baptist. And Toth said, seeing them taste the cup of death and return again in the light of life. There was another, there was another point there, too, when, when Jesus was looking and the disciples saw a guy blind and they said, who, who sinned that he was born blind? Was it his sin? No, he said, no, nah, it wasn't him or his parents. They all believed that. It was just the religions of today that decided to change that because they concocted a, their own story. Now look, where, where, where Toph said they stood on the great mountain still rising out of the water, there were some living saved from the rush of the fountains. And now if we go back and we look at Genesis 8, and in verse 8, what does it say? And God remembered Noah and everything that was living with him in the ark, and the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day upon the mountains of Ararat. And so there were some living saved from the rush of the fountains, weren't there? Why isn't that the same story? What, 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 why can't... Can you, can you imagine the implications here? If that story of Noah and the ark was actually, initially spoken of in the emerald tablets of time 30,000 years ago? And it's all talking about here. And then, we'll, I think it's uh, people are putting their coats on. You, you, everybody all right? You're not cold or anything? Okay. Uh, did you go to the next one, John? And here's Toth saying, I dwelt in the land of Chem for a long time. In other words, Chem is the land of the earth. That's, it's, uh, it's us. I dwelt in Forked River for a long time. Doing great works by the wisdom within me. And because the, the children of Chem, in other words, the children of the earth, grew into the light of knowledge watered by the rains of my wisdom. You see what's saying? I dwelt on the earth and the people began to evolve and change and grow into the light of knowledge from the wisdom that I gave them. And great were the sons of Kem, conquering the people around them. But look what he said. I mean conquering them so that he killed them, he says, conquering them. In other words, changing them, growing slowly upwards in what? In soul force. And then blasted I a path to Amenti so that I might retain my powers, living from age to age, a son of Atlantis, keeping the wisdom and preserving the records. So here we see, again, Toth and Jesus' comparison with Toth doing great works by the power within him and seeing those around him grow in wisdom from his teachings. And it says then in the next slide in John 5.20, For the Son, for the Father loves the Son and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. So Jesus is talking about the great works he did that we may marvel. And Toph said he dwelt on the earth doing great works by the wisdom within him. And then Jesus, it says in Matthew 10, 5, Jesus sent forth the 12 disciples saying, Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, preaching, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And talking about his disciples, Toth said, Great, the sons of Kem, conquering the people around them, growing slowly upwards in soul force. And so here then, if you look at this, you see both of them doing great works for what purpose? To civilize people. To get people to think in a higher realm than they've been thinking. See? 
to send people out, to teach people how to live, to teach people how to, how to take care of one another, how to uh, heal one another, if you would. I, and I see all of this stuff about the, uh, you know, Christian people coming on and saying, oh, they don't want health care and all that stuff. And, and yet, you look in the very Bible, and this Jesus that we are saying, who, who is obviously a descendant of, of, of the original ones that came 30,000 years ago, who said in the Bible, heal the sick, you have been freely given, now freely give. It, it's, it, I don't, and when I read the things that Jesus said, and I read the things from these types, I don't even know which, who it is that these people follow. So I'm not saying here that Toth physically existed any more than I'm saying that Jesus physically existed. Because that's not, that's irrelevant. Whether somebody taught you something is not important. The important thing is what did they teach you? Right? Who cares? But, it, but it, in our civilization, our obsession is with, oh, I believe he really existed. So what? What have you done about the fact that he existed? What have you done about the things that he said? But what I'm saying is that there is a very good possibility that we have connected the universal word from alien forces outside of this galaxy or universe, which eventually, through the Greek, classic Greeks became what we call the Bible. The same word, the same direction, the same instructions that came to this planet over 30,000 years ago and has been repeated through the personalities that become accepted by different cultures. You want, call, you want, you want the Buddha culture, if that suits you, you're over there, fine. You want Krishna, that's fine. You want Muhammad, that's fine. You want whoever you got, whatever, wherever the heck you are, go ahead and help yourself. But it comes basically out of the same source. But what happens? It gets taken by people and destroyed. And people twist it and turn it and change it and nod it so it represents the way, not the way the one who came to earth feels, but the way they feel. Not what the one who came to earth wanted, but what they wanted. And then we see things like we've seen. People fly planes into buildings and kill thousands of people. And then as a response... Other people fly planes and drop bombs and invade and kill hundreds of thousands of people. And it goes on and on and on. And innocent people that had nothing to do with anything wind up either sitting in a building and getting killed or sitting in their homes and getting bombed. And this is enough for the kings of the earth to raise their flags and have their bands play some patriotic stuff that they can march off to. The instructions that come from the source of the light and is distributed to those who immediately join together with the central photon source and then spread out and give this message to everybody. What is the message? What is so frightening as to what is spoken of here? The people should start to consider all living beings, that we should be concerned and we should not kill people, that we should not uh, uh, neglect people, that we should flow in harmony with nature and its living things. What is wrong with that? But, you know, that, even today, you, you see all of the political stuff going on, that becomes frightening to people. Oh, I think we should heal the sick. Uh, and no matter what, we should take care of them. Oh, boo, boo. What? You know? But see, this is where we're at. It doesn't make any difference what's right anymore. It makes the difference is, what group do I belong to? See, my God is with our group. I saw... Um, a bumper sticker the other day when Joan and I were driving on it said, my God is an awesome God. I said, what the hell are you talking about? 
my God is an awesome God. What about the guy across the street? His God. And oh, oh well, they're strange gods. My God's not a strange God. I said, well, your God's not strange, but you're strange. Now, the next is a description from Toth of the higher world. Maybe 45, 55. Maybe that's it. Maybe these are the instructions, the written. You know, you know what's so exciting about this? We got this in writing. And you haven't, you haven't seen anything yet. And it talks about that place. You know what it even says in one of the things? It says, find this place of light. This is what Toth said. Find this place of light and the fire of light right between your eyebrows. And then along came Jesus who said, if your eye be single right between your eyebrows, then you will fill with light. Oh, you're not going to tell me there were different people. I know where they came from. And I know where these words came from and where these directions came from. And so here's the description from Toth of the higher world and maybe 45, 55 and the quantum place of light. Now for a time I go from among them into the dark halls of Amenti, deep in the halls of the earth before the lords of the powers face to face once again with the dweller. I like that. He's going to the supreme power, isn't he? And he's going to meet face to face again with the dweller. Who else is going back to meet face to face with the dweller? Then Jesus said, a little while I'm with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. You want to call him the dweller? You call him the dweller. Because as you look below, you see, now for a time I go from them. And Jesus says, then I go unto him. And he said, Toth face to face with the dweller. And Jesus said, I go to him that sent me. Not from 30,000 years ago. Prepare to read of the powers of the other world at work. The things that are beyond even this time let alone 30,000 years ago. And, and this is the stuff that, you know, like uh, these, these, these uh, almost mythologies like Star Trek and Star Wars, this is the stuff they're made of. Because here's, here's something that's written 30,000 years ago. And hieroglyphs and symbols like prop circles. Look what he says. Few pass the portal to dark Amenti. I raised over the passage a mighty pyramid using the power that overcomes earth force. Whoa! What is that, Captain Kirk? There in the apex set I the crystal sending the ray into the time-space drawing the force from out of the ether concentrating upon the gateway to Amen. I set the crystal, sending the ray into time space, drawing the force from out of the ether. And you know what the ether is? It's space. Do you, do you realize again, you're not reading a comic book here, do you realize again that you read something that's written thousands and thousands of years ago that was read by Carl Jung, that was read by uh, Roger Bacon, by Aleister Crowley, uh, that was translated in, in, in all types of Latin and everything, the secret of creation, uh, and, and it's all talking about the level of consciousness and raising it to a new degree, that this has a, a tremendous history. 
that goes back to every culture. And it says here that he sent a ray into time space, setting the crystal and drawing the force out from space. It's, uh, it, it is very difficult, um, you know, for me especially, not to become uh, excited because I, you know, I feel like I've been let in on something, you know, really special here. Um, because all of us know that, you know, whether we read the Bible and, and we say, well, yeah, but I know, but the Greeks wrote it, and, uh, you know, but, and then they got some of the stories from the Jews, from, uh, and they got some of their stories from the Egyptians and all that. Where did all this stuff come from? And then you wind up finding it, that it came back, uh, you know, from, from thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And, and you have somebody talking in that time about the power that overcomes the earth force and ascending a, a ray into time space and drawing a, a, the force from out of space. It, it's an amazing, amazing thing. And, 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 and this is where I, I would like to, to go with this. And, um, you know, as, depending on what comes to me, uh, as you know, when I, I hear these things inside of here saying which way we're going, because I, I stood here uh, a couple of weeks or whenever it was, and I said, you know, I don't want to, you know, the stuff is it's going to get boring for you. Uh, and, and then, you know, the thing came, and it was just like a voice inside of me saying, this is, this is extremely important and critically important, and, and, I, and I think it is, because you know, as I've said over and over tonight, and I know it gets a little redundant, what we're talking about here is maybe solving the mystery as to the origin of all of these things, including the words of the Bible and the words of different cultures and, and, and the words of Jesus and who Jesus was and Toth and Hermes and all of this stuff coming from the point when uh, a, a voice at a, a level somewhere in a different uh, planet or a different universe or a different galaxy said, get your crew together and go down there to the place of the hairy barbarians and start to straighten them out and start to show them how to live. And then you can just visualize it, you know, uh, as, uh, maybe a, if you think like maybe a flying saucer or something, you can just see it like hovering over and then him saying, and then finally uh, we saw below us the land of them. And then we land and they come after us with spears and clubs. And these are the hairy ones that we, you know, whether we call them prehistoric men or whether we call them Neanderthal men. And they come after us. And I stop them cold with my ray gun. Stop. What? I stopped them with my ray gun. And then I sat them down and I made nice with them. I talked to them. I said, hey, look. We're going to make nice. We're going to show you how to do things. Everything's going to be peaceful and everything like that. And uh, I showed him some magic stuff, you know, like a Chris Angel style. You know, I'll look, I'll levitate. What, what do you want? Whatever you Ooh, this is God. You see? And this is what... So what does it become to us? Here in 2009, we read about God. And we read about angels and all of this stuff. And yet, for the first time maybe in your life, you heard of a prehistoric force coming through the sky, landing, and using technological equipment that isn't, you know, maybe even in existence now. And, and come on, it's not like it didn't wind up in the Bible, because in the book of Ezekiel, which we've covered many times, what did he see? He saw something flying. It was an object. It was flying, and he couldn't identify it. It had flames coming out of it, and he said he'd landed, and somebody got out of it. And a man in a white linen suit walked between, underneath it, and the earth was scorched from where it had landed. That's in the book of Ezekiel. What is different with that and Toth rising up in his ship and then seeing the earth below him and landing? The only difference is about 30,000 years later. And so now we come another 4,000 years later and we still are screwed up 
And the best thing that could happen is if this guy would rise up and come and land again. But you know what would happen now? They wouldn't come after him with clubs and spears. They'd shoot him down. You see? So where have we come from? Uh, it seems like what we have learned is how to shoot people and not how to spear them. Boy, we've really made a lot of progress. But for you that leave this room right now, because we're done, as you leave this room right now, you go out of here with a knowledge that you have heard something. You have heard something extremely special. You have probably broken the code on the origin of the things that you've read for years in the Bible, the origin of the things that you heard from Jesus, the identity of Jesus, where it all came from, where it all began, and what those from the higher elements and the higher realms beyond the planet Earth tried to do to bring civilization to this planet. And then you would be left to think, gee, uh, they came at a time when we were, you know, using spears and clubs and tried to straighten us out. Now that we're using missiles and smart bombs and so forth and so on, how in the world could they do this this time? Um, well, that's when the Emerald Tablet moved to, you know, South America and it came to the Mayans and the statements about 2012. But um, we'll continue with this. Uh, I'm anxious because the last thing that we talked about here was when Toth uh, uh, used the power that overcomes Earth force, set the crystal and sent the ray shooting off into time space, drawing the force out of space. And, and, and so as we go from there and, and compare it with the things that we've seen biblically and otherwise, um, it, it should be a, a mighty, mighty adventure that you can all be part of. And, and as I said, and it, it, let me just, be, as I conclude, if you want, you can go on your uh, Google, and you can Google the Emerald Tablet, and then you could look at Wikipedia, and you'll see the history of it, as I've given you. And so you'll see the credibility of this, uh, the stability and the credibility of these words and the things that uh, I've related to you. Okay? So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.